Welcome everyone to our first movie night of KOH Summer Camp. We've got a double feature for all you wide-eyed campers out there. First off, tonight we have Freak from Wild Eye Releasing released earlier this year. Freak follows a bloody legend that becomes all too real for a group of kids heading out for a weekend of camping and partying. Will they survive what waits for them in the woods? And at the breaks, we'll be going over our top five camping snacks, and we'll speak with the film's writer, director, and actor, Lucky Cerruti, and much more. And our second feature of the night is Summer Camp Massacre, aka Caesar and Otto's Summer Camp Massacre, which stars an icon of summer camp horror in Felissa Rose. All of that and more tonight on a special KOH Summer Camp edition of Scream Stream. Throughout the night, we will preview other upcoming summer camp content and show you how you can earn your Maryland Merit Badges and more. So stick around. And I want to give a big shout out to uh, everyone on the Kings of Horror Discord server, including Randall2k for being super active out there. Absolutely. Good job, Randall. Good job. Yes, Wish all, you were my patrol. <laughs> yes, all of our Discord members are great, and you are too. Make sure you join our Discord and be in the know when all of the camp happens. More summer camp goodness is on the way. For now, let's start Freak. Written, directed, and starring Lucky Saruti of Dead Vision. Oh my god, you scared me. Where did you go? I had to pee. You see anything scary out there? Like what? I don't know. Like a, a bear with a switchblade? <laughs> no, can't say that I did. Oh, do you want a drink? Absolutely, I do. Hey. Thanks for coming out here with me. Of course. But I, it's not, of course. I know this isn't your thing, but I'm really glad you're here. I'm happy you asked me. Really? Really. Good. I am too. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, what does it look like I'm doing? <laughs> I mean, you're just, you're just going for it? Well, why not? We're all alone out here, isn't that the idea? Whoa! <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're so beautiful and this is really fucking hot, but it, I don't know, we should just maybe 
Just, just I, old dude. So what you're saying is that we're all alone out here. No one can hear us or see us. And you don't want to take advantage of that. Is that, is that really what you're saying? No. No? Nope. <laughs> Good. I'll meet you in the tent. Ryan, 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 am I gonna need sunscreen? What? Sunscreen, am I gonna need sunscreen? Where do you think you're going, Cancun? Oh. You planning on heading down to the boardwalk, cooking them sausages? I've never camped out before. <laughs> camped out? Shut up. Look, bring it if you want, I don't give a shit, but hurry up, Jake's gonna be here in like 15 minutes. I'll be ready. Oh. And don't forget your pool floaties and your boogie board. Fuck you. Fuck you. Tell us again, who all is going? Mom, it's really no one. It's just Jake, me, Henry, and Kendra. And Jake is driving? Yes, Jake is driving. And where are you going? I don't know. Jake found the place. It's like three hours away. You're all gonna fit in one car? His car is big enough. That's why he's driving. Are we done here? He's gonna be here in like five seconds. Ryan, I'm serious. We really appreciate that you're taking your sister with you, but we want you to promise that you'll try and include her. She's been feeling very isolated lately, oh, and I- Oh my god, it, please. Thank you. Do you have everything you need, sweetie? Ryan? I want you to take good care of your baby sister. Maybe she shouldn't go. John, I mean, these are Ryan's friends. Mom, I want to go. See? She wants to go. We're all good. You'll be fine. 
It's just three nights. All right. Did you bring your sunscreen? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Hi, Jake. Come on in. Hey, Miss Marino. How are you? It's Diane. I've told you a thousand times. Well, sometimes it's hard to kick my politeness, I guess, Diane. What up, Big John? Okay. You guys ready to go? Okay. Text me when you get there. If there's service. It's a big ass fucking backpack, man. Yeah, you sure you want to go? Yeah, Mom. I want to go. Okay. I love you. Go have fun. See you on Sunday. Henry, pass up my weed pen, it's in my backpack. Henry, pass up my weed pen, bro. Save that shit for the tent, dude. Weed pen, thank you. How long until we get there? It's all starting to look the same out here. GPS says another 34 minutes. Where did you hear about this place? Uh, I've actually had my eye on this place for a while now. I mean, when's the last time we all just got together and got fucking weird, you know? So, I waited for a weekend that worked for all of us and just pulled the trigger. By the way, uh, Henry, you owe me 50 bucks. I'm not going to forget. Fucking bum. Yeah, yeah, but wait. Is this... Is this the fucking place you told me about, man? Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck, dude! I had nightmares for a week after you told me that shit, bro. Babe. Get ready to not leave my side for the whole fucking weekend. Nightmares? What do you mean? What does he mean? Uh, this place has some history. God damn it, dude. You always do shit like this. Anytime we do something, you have to make it some weird bullshit that you think is cool. What's the history? You want to know? Yeah. See, at least someone's going to have fun with me this weekend. Fuck up. <laughs> Just say what you're gonna say and let's get there. Well, uh, I don't know how much is true, but uh, I found a bunch of stuff online and it's hard to weed through all the bullshit, but uh, there's always a constant one. Arthur Crenshaw. Arthur Crenshaw? Yeah, he's a guy. I mean, well, kinda. He's from the town we just passed through. When he was born, he was born super deformed, and I don't mean his arm didn't develop, I mean, he was almost unrecognizable as a human being. And uh, it was a really religious town, and 
And so they thought it was some monster, some biblical mistake. After years of trying to make it work and trying to raise him and keep him away from society, his parents just gave up and they brought him to the exact campground where we're staying and just left him out there to die. Jesus. Yeah, and eventually they built the campground and people would stay out there and they'd complain that their food would be stolen and some people said that they could even hear screaming at night. Eventually some people just didn't come out at all. They just disappeared. Alright, I'm tapping out. Alright, that last part wasn't true, but the rest of the stuff I found online. How fucking nuts is this shit? B, that scared me. It's not true. It's just some old fucking story that Jake found on the internet. All signs point to this being bullshit. I think it's cool. See? Thank you, Jenna. <laughs> me and you, we know what's up. Will you watch the road, please? We should be coming up in the turn. Slow down. I'm telling you, dude. It's gonna be sick. Whoa. Look at this motherfucker. Hey, uh, we have a reservation under Jake Wilson. Yep. Uh, do you need me to move my car or anything? It'll be fine right there. Okay, cool. Got some paperwork for you to sign. Then we'll get you on your way. Grab your gear. Come on inside. Okay, sounds good. You heard him, guys. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you need anything from me? All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Make sure you grab all your shit, because I'm not going to be the one that comes back here if you forget it. Oh, and uh, let's forget about the fairy tale that we heard on the way here. Okay? Jake? I'm looking at you. Yeah. No promises. Fuck, dude. This place is sick. Yeah, it is. Wow. It smells terrible. That's nature, babe. But yeah, it's not great. I just need a signature here. Oh, okay. That's me. Guess we're all set then. Picked a quiet time of the year to visit. It'll be the only active campsite for the whole weekend. Oh, that's great. Well, if you don't need anything else from me, I'm gonna get you your map to the campsite. Get you on your way. Thank you. What do you know about Arthur Crenshaw? What did you say? Nothing. She's just really tired from the trip. What do you know about Arthur Crenshaw? What do you know about Arthur Crenshaw? He lived in these woods. Some would say that. I heard the story in the car on the way. That right. Well, that story has cost me a lot of folks coming out here. But is it true? Of course not. 
It was made up by families that used to camp here years and years ago to keep their precious darlings from wandering off in the woods alone. This is the crazy fucking hermit. <laughs> I've lived in these woods all my life. I'm an old, old, old man. I've, I've, I've hiked miles from either point on the compass. You know what I've seen? Nothing. That's what this story is. Absolutely nothing. Got that? Well... That'll be it for me. Now, you're going to take the left-hand trail out here about a mile and a half to your campsite. Let's see. Oh, I have a landline here in case of any emergencies. Okay. Okay, and be careful out there. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Guys, come on, pick it up. Let's make it there before sundown, at least. Fuck. Hey. What the fuck was that? What? Back at the cabin. Why did you bring that shit up? I don't know. I thought it was cool. You can't just pull shit like that. But Jake said that... Jake knows when to keep his weird fucking interests to himself. You need to learn how to do that. Just... Promise me you'll try to act fucking normal for the rest of the weekend? Fine. this map correctly and uh, I'm pretty sure we did then yeah this is the one there's rocks everywhere we're outside babe uh, we'll move them <laughs> we'll move them okay uh, we should get set up before it gets dark do we want to build a fire or anything nah, I'm beat I'm gonna crash yeah same um, we can get wood tomorrow uh, I guess pick a spot and uh, get set up. What was that? Did, did you see something? Um, no. It um, must have been a bird or a squirrel or something. It's nothing. Okay, well, it'll leave us alone now that it knows we're here.
there's like no service out here. Did you think there would be? We're in like the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah, I did. Guys, don't you think it's weird we like haven't seen any animals? Like we'd at least see a fucking squirrel or something by now. Huh. Yeah, that is weird. You guys haven't seen anything? I don't think so. That's weird. Oh wait, Jenna, you saw something yesterday, didn't you? Um, yeah, but I didn't see what it was. They ran away. Yeah, well, whatever it was probably ran to tell the other animals to steer clear of Henry's stinky ass breath. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. <laughs> wait, really? You want to help me cook dinner? It should only take about 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh my god! Don't look, babe. Don't look. Well, there's an animal. Jesus Christ. What did that? I don't know. Bear, maybe? A bear? A fucking bear killed this deer in our camp? Uh, I read somewhere that bears don't eat where they kill, so... It probably killed it and then dragged it here and then got uh, scared away by our stuff or something. Since when have you heard of a fucking bear being scared off by some tents? All right, we don't even know if it's a bear, okay? It probably died on its own and then animals were dragging it around and shit, okay? I don't know. That looks fresh. And it's fucking gutted. Okay, but why the fuck is it here? I don't know, okay? But let's get it out of here. Henry, Ryan. Let's grab this thing and drag it way out so whatever it was does not come back, okay? Here's probably good. Dude, you think whatever fucking did this is gonna come back looking for it? I fucking hope not. No, I don't think so. Animals have a pretty good sense of smell, so they should know it's here. What the fuck did this? I don't know. We should get out of here, though. Come on, guys. Babe, I'm scared. Why? We already slept here one night, and nothing happened. Yeah, but what if the bear comes back for that deer? Babe, it might not be a bear. It could be a wolf or a mountain lion. Is that supposed to make me feel better? <sighs> You're right, babe. I I'm sorry. We could, uh, fool around a little bit. Help you forget about it. Okay, are you fucking kidding me? I'm trying to get over a traumatic experience and all you can think about is your dick. A traumatic experience? Babe, you saw some roadkill. Big deal. Let's take advantage of this night together, alone. Under the stars. God, you're such a fucking pig. Babe, I don't even know why you wanted to come on this fucking camp trip oh, in the first place. Um, you invited me. Because that's what a good boyfriend is supposed to do. And then you're supposed to say, no, go have a fun weekend with your friends. Oh, so you didn't even want me to come in the first place. Babe, that's not what I said. Yep, 
fucking save it. What are you doing? I'm going to Jenna's tent. No, don't do that, babe. No, just fucking save it, Henry. No, it's bad enough that you didn't want me here in the first place, so I'm just gonna do exactly what you wanted. No, you know what? You don't get to fucking tell me what to do, you fucking two-faced bastard. I'm just gonna take my shit, and I'm just gonna leave just like you wanted me to. And don't expect me to find... Jason Voorhees, Madman Mars, Angela Baker, Cropsey. All these summer camp slashes have etched their names in the campfire lore and with each passing generation. Now meet the newest slasher to join the ranks, Mr. Arthur Crenshaw. And it's quite the sight to see. One of the highlights of this film so far are practical effects and the actual puppet of Crenshaw himself. Mm -hmm. Before we patch Lucky through, we want to go ahead and reveal the snacks coming in at the number five and number four spot out of our top five camping snacks. In the number five spot we have coming in way lower than I think other people may have had it mm. is dried fruit. Now right. before you all murder whoa, me whoa. at the stake, the snack is always one that sounds good on paper, but if it comes down between this or the other options on this list, this is getting tough. Yeah, so. I can't even believe that made the list. Honestly, I'm surprised. <laughs> Equally confusing as the placement of dried fruit on this list, the fact that this even made the cut is troublesome. Coming in at four, we have beans, for some reason. Mm, beans. And weans. Beans, beans and weans. Listen, when nature calls, you're gonna wish you had beans to eat. And wings. Wings. I prefer beans. Mm. Well, we'll see what makes the rest of the list in just a little bit. Mm. All right, back to Freak. Armed with a budget of $10,000, Lucky Shot Freak in the summer of 2020 in upstate New York in only 16 days. And we get the feeling that this urban legend has been a while for quite, has been around for quite a while yeah. since it's been on. Uh, the internet and there's tons of stuff on the internet that they research ahead of time. So, yeah, it reminds me of uh, the Glam Trods. Huh, yeah. you, you remember them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they ran the camp after it reopened, like following that horrible fire in 2003. It caused everything to just shut down yeah. for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. But uh, they too always seemed uh, off. It's weird how they just disappeared after only a summer or two here. Owners come and go. Now let's just see what uh, the man behind our freak has to say, uh, Lucky Saruti, everyone, thank you so much for joining us here on the KOH Summer Camp. I am so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you for uh, showing the movie. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you. 
Dead Vision Productions was started in 2018, and you are the last of the original trio of founders, with Freak being the first film released since that change with the uh, administration. So how does Freak change based on the way you all handled prior, like the prior productions of your company? Freak was such a massive step up uh, for Dead Vision uh, in every way possible, as we wanted it to be. Um, when that you know, change happened, where the other uh, two founding members of, of Dead Vision, um, when we parted our ways, I was really worried about the future of, um, of Dead Vision, of my own creative output, you know, what I wanted to do, because we had so many things that we wanted to do and things that we talked about and, and um, you know, Sometimes that's not the way it works, which is great. Um, and I love those guys. Um, it just, you know, wasn't the right thing at the right time. Um, but I was left kind of scrambling with, with what I wanted to do, what that was going to look like, if I even wanted to continue this endeavor at all. Um, I kind of need a little bit of accountability when it comes to, to following through on, on things. I, I like to be, you know, held accountable by other people that are interested in doing it and, and stuff like that. So when that went away, I was kind of like, oh man. Um, and in fact, um, this all started, this this project, um, I was going to go do uh, a play. I, I grew up an actor. Um, I was about to go off and, uh, and perform. It had been a while since I've done that and it was a production of Frankenstein that my friend, uh, Matt Sorensen, was directing. Um, and then COVID shut the world down and Matt and I were left kind of, again, wondering what was next, all of that, as everybody was. But he was like, why don't we make a movie? You made a movie before, let's, let's try it. Let's go out in the woods, let's just bring our close-knit group of people and, and uh, let's, let's do it. So we did. Um, and you know, once that was set in stone, we knew that we wanted to, you know, just take things up a, a notch. Uh, my favorite thing about this endeavor is is being able to see exactly how much I'm learning and exactly how much I'm uh, improving um, from thing to thing. So um, I really wanted that for Freak, and I think it, you know, in the effects, in obviously the uh, the big puppet, um, in the acting, in the direction on my part. Um, I think, you know, in terms of everything, it just was that next step, um, which is super exciting and, uh, and you know, just keep moving up is, is, uh, is the idea. This Arthur puppet is impressive. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of creating this deformed maniac? Absolutely. So. When we were deciding on what kind of movie we wanted to make and, and what we wanted it to kind of look like and we landed on that, um, that slasher idea, um, we could have gone the way of, of like the man in the mask or the man in the suit sort of deal, but um, due to like how I wanted Arthur, how we both wanted Arthur to, to come across and, and um, we, we decided really early on that we didn't want it to look like something that was recognizably uh, human. We didn't want it to, to be identifiable as something that, that was familiar or something that, that could easily be identifiable as what was wrong with him. We wanted that to be not only nebulous, but like something that, that uh, can't uh, exist. So the easiest way to do that Easy. It wasn't easy. Um, the, the the first thing that we thought of was, uh, oh, let's make him a puppet. Let's uh, you know build him. Uh, Matt uh, just got had gotten his um, master's degree uh, in puppetry, so that was like an easy jumping off point. Um, we're both super passionate about practical things, practical effects, practical monsters. So um, it was kind of the only way to do it. Um, and he is, there are a couple of different iterations um, of the puppet itself. There is the big, tall, full body one that Matt wore on his like chest. It was kind of like a reverse backpack puppet with these big arms on poles. 
Um, we did have a close-up face, so anytime you see a drool shot or like the mouth moving or the eye moving, that was this close-up head that had the back um, torn off with, with all the mechanics in there so that Matt could work that. And then there were live hands that Matt wore for crushing and ripping and tearing and all that. Um, that was a crazy learning experience. Um, I love the way he looks. I, I have him on my body forever. Um, so, but that was the idea, is that we didn't want it to be anything that was recognizable, anything that anybody had really uh, seen before in terms of, of what his deal is. <laughs> what films inspired your creative decisions for free? Of course there are the comparisons to to something like Friday the 13th which I am I don't shy away from at all um, of course it's a big inspiration I would challenge anyone to uh, to tell me that they made a, a slasher movie in the woods and that uh, it wasn't uh, an influence in one way or another um, but you know other kind of deeper cut I suppose uh, something like Mad Men or or the burning or, or things like that you know um, came into play as well. But I also took a lot of inspiration um, in terms of the way that Arthur looked and how he, I, how I wanted him to come across from somebody like uh, Frank Hennenlotter, with, you know, Basket Case, any of those sequels, those insane looking monster effect, um, you know, uh, creatures. I, I really love, um, I'm a big Adam Green fan, something like the Hatchet uh, franchise, um, the, the treatment of, of Victor Crowley in that, I, I really loved and wanted to carry into um, our treatment of Arthur, uh, kind of that, you know, sympathy. I really, you know, wanted people to, to at least feel bad for him a, a little bit, I hope. Um, you know, it, it's just a fun... We weren't trying to reinvent the wheel by any means. Uh, in in a lot of respects, this was still this is still me exploring filmmaking, exploring learning how to make a movie, learning that language. So um, I really wanted it to be fun. I wanted it to be fun. I wanted the kills to be cool. I wanted the the monster to be memorable in one way or another. Um, and. Uh, I'm I'm super happy with it. Um, so that I mean I, I took inspiration from where you would think for sure, um, but also it's a fan making what I would want to see in, in in one of those movies. So um, I hope that comes across. <laughs> what is the biggest influence on you as a filmmaker? I take influence from a lot of places. Um, but as far as what I would like to do as a, as a filmmaker and, and with Dead Vision, um, I'm really drawn to people that, that, um, that have a, a core group of creatives that, that will foster a vision, that are passionate about it. You know, people like John Waters come to mind um, that just make cool art with their friends. That feeling, that, I mean, it, it is tangible. Um, if you watch something um, like a John Waters movie, or like a, uh, you know, and any any one of those those filmmakers that that have that core group of people that will, you know, go to the ends of the earth with this person to to make a vision to to make this exactly right, um, I'm super attracted to those kind of creators. Um, and on that same token, I'm also super. Uh, attracted to people that that have a singular vision that that it's you know they, they're making their art in the exact way that they need to do it um, I'm a huge uh, underground kind of horror um, connoisseur I suppose um, a lot of those people that are making these no budget movies now thankfully are, are I, I would consider friends and, and peers um, so again, just just having a, a vision, having uh, an idea that is singular, that that you have to make. Nobody is going to give you the money to make it. Nobody, you know, whatever. You could live in East Jesus nowhere. You know what I mean? And and 
but you're still gonna make this movie with five duck bucks and a, and a roll of duct tape, you know, because you have to. You have to get it out. You have to express uh, in that way. So those people are, are constant sources of, of inspiration for me, for the drive to be better, for, for, um, for Dead Vision uh, as a whole, just that punk attitude of just like, I'm just gonna make this and I don't really care uh, if anybody sees it or if anybody likes it because I have to make it and I wanna make it. So that spirit um, is, is a definite uh, source of, of inspiration and, and drive for, for the things that I would like to do and, and um, I aspire to be that, that brave creatively. All right, Lucky. Hang tight and we'll talk to you again after the movie. And as for the rest of you, stick around. We'll see you at the break. Jenna, don't! We have to go after him. Jenna, that thing will fucking kill you. We need to get back to the main cabin and, 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 and call the police. Fuck, it's so dark. I can't even see the goddamn trail. We can follow it. He could still be alive. We can help him. We have to get the car keys. Ryan, we can't just leave him out here. Look at what that fucking thing did to Henry and Kendra. Jake is being ripped apart right now, and we need to leave before it comes back. Now get your shit and let's go. Arthur Crenshaw. What? It's Arthur Crenshaw. What the fuck are you talking about? These are his woods. That's why people never come out of here. He kills them. Jenna, shut the fuck up about that bullshit. I just watched my friends get mauled by a wild fucking animal, and we need to leave and get help. It wasn't a fucking animal. There are no animals here. He eats the animals. He probably eats the people, too. Jenna, please shut up and get your shit. But you saw it. I don't know what the fuck I saw. I just woke up to my friends being torn the fuck apart. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't that fucking... Bullshit story. Get your shit. We need to go. Now. It's the goddamn middle of the night. What? It's so important that I can't wait until tomorrow morning. What happened? Your dad. There was an animal attack. We need your phone. Come here. Animal attack, you said. It came out of nowhere. It... Can we please just call the police? I'll call the police. Chief's an old friend of mine. It's gonna take him a while to get here, so you should probably sit down and I need you to help me tell him what happened. I need water. Is there any water? Get some from the tap in the kitchen right through there.
we're gonna get you out of here. Go. Go. Please. Ryan's on the phone with the cops right now. We can... Oh my god. Jenna. Run. Get away from him. What? Get away from him, Ryan, now! I'm trying to help you, little lady. Please, Ryan, we have to go right now. He's on the phone with the police. They're on their way. You're his dad. What did you say? You're Arthur's dad. You know what he does. You let him do it. You let him kill our friends. You're a killer. Now hold on there. Don't you, don't you go throwing these names around. you know what it's like to have to protect someone that nobody understands? To love someone that people say would be better off dead? To have to provide for a family that is being torn apart by the hatred of others, constantly looking over your shoulder? You hear insults and, and names and threats. Kill him, cure him, or kill me. Every parent's nightmare. I don't expect you to understand, and I hope you never do. I'm, I'm not a killer. I've made some sacrifices that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy built this camp so we could be together, so I, I could keep him from the world that doesn't understand him, doesn't accept him, not like I do. I, I left everything behind so I could hold on to what little bit of family I have. God, God damn it, he is my son! My life has been taken, and so if a few of those ignorant fools have to lose theirs, well, so be it. That's the cost of having a family. It doesn't have to be. Oh, say that bullshit! You, you, you ran down here. Oh, I'm scared. Why don't you gotta look at him? He doesn't know what he's doing. He, he's just trying to survive. He didn't ask for any of this, and you'd deny him his life? No, no, that's not true. You can find another way. We can help. He can't help me. He can't help my boy. If you had a child, you'd understand. I do what I do. move. The police are on their way. I've never gotten to say this to any one of you before. I'm sorry.
didn't ask for this. I'm so sorry you have to live like this. I'm so sorry. Please, Arthur. I'm your friend. Just like that, a reminder of the lengths a father will go to to ensure their child's safety. Mm. And we're left with the fate of our female protagonist unknown. Unless we can get lucky to give us uh, you know, an answer. So, uh, does she survive? I'm sorry to say you won't get anything out of me. Um, but I will uh, say that, that there was an early version of the script that uh, that the ending was less ambiguous, that there was a, uh, you know, a direction one way or the other. Um, what that was, I don't know. I have an idea, um, but I like the fact that everybody, um, I hear all the time, like, oh, I think she dies. Oh, I think she's alive. 
and that's my favorite. So um, I leave it up to you. Tell us a, a bit about Uncle Sleezo's toxic and terrifying TV hour. Thank you for asking. So Uncle Sleezo's toxic and terrifying TV hour um, is my latest feature. It's an anthology film. Uh, much like your fine show that you have here, um, does have a host. Um, it is kind of presented in a block of cable television, um, where the kind of late night cable access horror host um, shows the, the segments of the anthology as the films that he's showing on his show. Um, and not only that, we did film um, entire commercial breaks to to be shown interstitially throughout the TV hour. Um, it is super fun. I had a blast working again with Matt Sorensen uh, and Leslie Dame on this um, movie. It is, um, again, just me exploring different genres. Um, we really took some big swings on this. Um, it's super funny. It's super creepy. There's something in it for, for everybody. Um, and I would highly suggest um, checking it out if it sounds like something that you'd be interested in because we're super proud of it um, and it's a good time. Going back to free, uh, with that ending left open, uh, are you up to revisit Arthur Crenshaw in uh, some type of sequel? It's so funny you should ask. I am in the midst of, of writing the follow-up uh, to Freak. Um, just as Freak was kind of the, the next evolution uh, for Dead Vision, um, Freak 2, I'm not sure of the title yet, um, but the, the follow-up will be so much bigger. So much, I mean, we're going balls to the wall on this thing, um, and I'm super excited. Um, and as far as the the link from the the first to the second, um, you'll just have to watch and find out. Um, but I am super excited. I know Matt's super excited. Um, we got to dust old Arthur off because uh, um, he's got a lot of work to do in this one. So uh, yes, follow up for sure, confirmed. Writing it now. Well, Lucky, we want to thank you for chatting with us tonight and taking a little time to talk about Freak. Thank you so much for having me. This is such an honor. Um, as far as anything new in the works, um, just writing, 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 writing. Um, but if you want to follow along with everything that we are doing, um, Dead Vision Productions on all sorts of social media, you can find us there, deadvisionproductions.com. Um, and uh, come and find me on any of those. Uh, tell me that you watch Freak, um, and, uh, and let me know what you think. Um, I'd love to talk to you. But again, thank you for having me. Okay, it's intermission time. Go get refills and load up your snacks. Our second feature of the evening is Summer Camp Massacre. Oh, yeah. Wait, we didn't get snacks. <laughs>